Well, good morning, everybody. Late morning as I'm going to start our teaching in the continuation of the book study of War on the Saints today. And chapter seven, page 154. I scratch my head, brothers and sisters. And let, let's begin today. Father, I, I pray that hundreds of people would be touched by what we're doing here for the kingdom of God as we're doing the book study and putting the audibles up on the uh, internet on our YouTube channel. And brothers and sisters, if you, if you enjoy what we're trying to do with the Daily House of Prayer, the Ministry of Salvation, just hit the, hit, you could hit the like button if you like it. You don't have to hit any button, but if you really want to hear the Word of God audibly, we're, we're doing every book in the Bible. We've been doing this for years, and I'm going to be doing quite a few spiritual books in the days ahead, taking quotations out of deliverance books that I've already gotten the approval to use, because those brothers went home to be with the Lord. And I, I have such a, a, a lot of different weapons, you know, the weapons of our warfare are mighty, pulling down strongholds. And it, it all starts with the word of God, people. You got to be grounded in the word of God. And then you can look at the spiritual books. So I pray you got ears to hear as I'm going to read this. I'll go through some stuff from before and add in from my heart, but once again, War in the Saints book study, chapter seven, the ground and the symptoms of possessing, of possession. And in column two of the summary that's given on page uh, two, column two, not page two, you got to go back to 102 in War on the Saints. And it's the second column. And I'm going to just read it to you. The ground given for deception. Thoughts submitted to the mind. Passivity of the whole being in various parts or stages. Your, your faculties unused. In other words, you don't pray about things. You don't think about things. You don't take thoughts captive to the word of God. Lack of mental control. There's a word called garrulity, which sometimes we tend to keep talking instead of making sense. We go down rabbit trails. There, that's in a lot of Christians today, brothers and sisters. The lack of reasoning and the lack of the will giving up power of decision. In other words, did you ever have to make up your mind? Ceasing to use the judgment. The actions as the result of these various things. The actions of giving more ground. And that's how we're going to open up uh, the teaching today. You know, in column two of the summary, uh, 102 I just read. The various ways in which ground is given for the deception and possession of evil spirits. You know, and I'm praising God that I have the time. And I've studied this book many, many times to do this. So this is about deception and the possession of evil spirits are briefly uh, uh, summarized. Communication is possibly with the believer without any ground being given, but evil spirits can never interfere with the faculties of brain or body unless sufficient ground for possession has been obtained by them. So that means if a Christian is talking by another spirit out of their vocal cords, then they've given the enemy ground in their life. And that ground needs to be found out, people. Otherwise, they get to stay. Satan has power to communicate with Christ in the wilderness. We know that. 
because the devil spoke to Jesus when he was praying, fasting, and, and that was, you can locate that, you want to read about it, in the Gospels. My favorite Gospel is the book of Mark. But for the devil spoke to Christ, and Christ replied, yet the Lord himself, later on in the Gospel of John 1430, God said to the devil in that scripture, Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and had nothing in me. And, and God was talking in the gospel to the people, because there was going to be a time when God left, and then the world there is going to come under the prince of the world. We all know that's the devil. He's the God of this world. So everything we can think about what's going on in even real time today, the entertainment, television, all this kind of stuff, that's the prince of this world. And yeah, there's some good being done, I think, uh, with Christians being a witness in front of all these people, but most of the people today in the world are not believers. And we have to pray for people. That's where my house shall be called the house of prayer comes in. And in our ministry, we pray every day for the salvation of souls. We've been doing this for many, many years, brothers and sisters. And it's the ministryofsalvationfellowship.org, Daily House of Prayer. You can find it on our website. For the devil spoke to him, Christ replied. So I just shared with you what God said in the Gospel of John 1430. You have the address. That although the prince of this world came to them, he could not find nothing in him for his working. In other words, Christ was sinless, perfect, and there was nothing in Christ that would cling to the deception. The devil also communed with Eve in a state of innocence. It is therefore no proof of ground or sin in mind or life that Satan is able to communicate with us believers. But there is a certain class of communication which cannot be carried on without ground having been given. This is a difference between communication and communion. Communication is with the mind as evil spirits suggest to it. But they have communion with the man through the senses. Very important you hear this right now. We can communicate with the devil through the senses as a respond to our feelings given to them by the senses, delicious, lulling, exquisite, sensations in the body arising from spiritual causes. You know, one of the things I could always say here, Chris, oh, it's given me goosebumps, or I feel heat. Sound familiar? A lot of people uh, equate that to the Holy Spirit in the charismatic movement. M may always be attributed, uh, Jesse Penn Lewis writes here, not to the, the Holy Ghost, but to evil spirits, for they feed the sensuous. And nothing that comes from God in purity does this, nor does he in any degree by his manifestations minister to a self-indulgent, self-satisfied, sensuous condition of our minds. The book says, of the mind or body of his redeemed ones, but on the contrary. So we're going from one, page 154 in War and the Saints now to 155. If you just came in and you're trying to follow with your uh, War and the Saints book. The operations of God and man are directed to the elimination of all that feeds the senses. And the inv invigoration of a spirit, soul, and body for a keenness of the activities of life. The sagity of the senses. That means our appetite, however caused by evil spirits, sooner or later changes into a manifestation 
and the true character of the source stands revealed, okay, when irritable or disagreeable feelings take the place of the soothing influence bitter to given or hither to given, excuse me, I pronounced it wrong uh, with my eyesight, to the horror of the one who had reveled in the exquisite waves of peace. Though to have come from God and who is now convinced that he has lost God's presence and power, where the disagreeable takes place now, may have been the place where an agreeable manifestation occurred in our past. It says in the past. So once again, we're starting another uh, a subtitle here for the next part of the read, and it'll have some scriptures. But this is titled, Ground to Evil Spirits in the Mind. So that means we're giving ground to the evil spirits in the mind. And that's important to understand the book, brothers and sisters. In the list of various ways by which ground is given to evil spirits, the first is by means of suggestion or thoughts that are coming into our minds. Thoughts manifestly from Satan. Every believer rejects at once when it, when it becomes conscious of them but there's thousands of thoughts you've often heard steve and me talk about that over the years that come without any volition of the person that means when you're walking and all of a sudden you start getting thoughts not necessarily it's always from god for few understand control of the mind in other words we don't know how to bring every thought captive to the mind of christ and how to bring every thought captive to the mind of Christ that the Word of God teaches us in 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought how to the obedience of Christ, brothers and sisters. One of the symptoms of demon possession is absolute instability or inability, even after the volition to change your course of thinking or subject of thought, for the mind appears like it's stiff and laborious in action. The man cannot let a specific thought go from his mind even when he wills to. And brothers and sisters, I, I'm being honest, I had that happen last night. I couldn't think where to go with what I was doing, and the enemy was operating, trying to discourage me from doing a cut in one of the teachings, and I got so frustrated, I just said, you know what, Lord, you allowed me to give the teaching, I'm just going to live it like it is. Let it go and let it bless the people. And I found out sometimes those thoughts are trying to get us to go in another direction. And sometimes God knows what's better. And whatever the Holy Spirit gives you when you're, you're ministering to people and you're talking to people about the word of God, then you need to let go and trust that God's going to get his work accomplished in the way it was sent forth by his Holy Spirit. That's a lot to chew on there, you know. And I'm, I'm going to go to another uh, scripture in a second here. The chief faculty open to the access of deceiving spirits is the mind. That's where a lot of the battles are, brothers and sisters, especially before the believer apprehends the need of a renewed mind. You know, the Bible talks about a renewed mind in Ephesians 4.23, and the re renewed mind is in the spirit of your mind and, re and realizes that his mind can be open to and also used by evil spirits, notwithstanding the divine operation in the innermost shrine of his being. Also, 
before he realizes what he has admitted as ground for the evil spirits in his past life, for all the thoughts inserted by the God of this world. Notice what she wrote here. The God of this world. And it tells you to go to the appendix at the bottom. Uh, small writing, so let me bring it closer to me. See pages 112 and 135. So take the time as we get done with this read to go back to page 112 and, and 130, I can't, I'm having, it's small print, 132, I'm sorry, I apologize. And I'm turning the page now, if you're with me with the book, to 156 today. And, and when we're, we're doing this study, the God of this world is blinding our minds. You know, I'm talking about when you're walking in the spirit, you got to be careful to your thoughts. You know, on page 156, we get scripture right away here. You know, let me read them to you. Second Corinthians 4, 4, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, that's New Testament, the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, in other words, God coming in the flesh, should shine unto them. The word enlightens us. That's what shining unto us is all about. And in Ephesians 4.23, he says, and be renewed again. I just said it page back in your minds. Form material for his latter working, such as thoughts judged or unconsciously, or even perhaps years before, mental conceptions, submitted to things without examination, taking them fat, uh, captive, floating ideas which have drifted into the ground of your mind. That's where the evil spirits can hide in past what you gave ground with even before Christ. The believer knows not whence a sentence in a paper, a word dropped in his hearing, the floatsome and jetsome of the mental world, leaving unthought of an effect upon him, coloring scripture and placing the mind almost at the mercy of any suggestion of evil spirits under these certain conditions later on. So now we're going to go a little further in. The next uh, title on 156 takes us into how to detect evil spirits interference with our minds. It says here, how to detect evil spirits interference with the mind. So to detect the working of these evil spirits upon the mind, let the believer, that's you and I, note the way in which his thoughts come. If the mind is working easily, quietly, in normal action, in the duty of the moment, and then all of a sudden, sudden flashes, suggestions, or apparent thoughts arise, not in sequence or in any orderly connection with the work he's doing or has in hand, then the enemy may be counterfeiting the operation of the person's own mind and trying to insert his suggestions into as if they were the outcome of the person or the man's own thinking. Could be male nor female in Christ. We all know that. For when he is in the process of thinking, the lying spirits, the spirits of deception, that's what their, their, their function is, to get us to believe the lie so that we can be deceived. They seek to inject some thought, suggestion, or even a feeling. The first into the mind and the last into our spirit. And that's the human spirit, brothers and sisters. God doesn't leave us as orphans. He's given us a brain. He created us to make a choice whom this day you're going to serve the kingdom of God, or you're going to serve the God of this world. That's the war we are all in. 
The danger at this point is for the believer to be ensnared by the simultaneous working of his own mind and the presentation of the mind of the evil spirits, pictures, or visions, which he thinks come from his own imaginations, or very subtly refined suggestions which have no appearance of being supernatural or even being distinct from the person at all. Many think everything, all is supernatural, is of a necessity strikingly marvelous and awesome, whereas the enemy's working is very ordinary, and in ordinary that he is unrecognized. You don't even see and recognize the woes of the devil or the snares. And the operations of the supernatural appear to be natural, so that they are not looked at upon as supernatural. Going over to page 157, the scripture statement of the whole world, because the word of God teaches us that the whole world lying in the evil one is so true that his speakings and workings are accepted, brothers and sisters, and followed and yielded to as the ordinary things of life and as the ordinary operation of our mental faculties. And we assume that it's God teaching us. The kingdom of darkness is near and natural to all the world under the rule of this prince of darkness. So we have another subtitle here, page 157 today. It is best, it says, the symptoms of interference with the mind. And that's where we're going today's teaching, is teaching us how the enemy counterfeits. And where does he operate in our minds. So the symptoms of the interference with the mind, it is best to be suspicious of the abnormal in every shape and form. God does not interfere with the natural operation of our faculties. A sudden stoppage of thought or sequence in the action of the mind, in other words, in thought or memory, as well as acute Loss of the use of either may indicate the interference of evil spirits interfering with your thought pattern, brothers and sisters. The spirits of evil in possession of some faculty of the mind. Not, in other words, a part of your mind is not functioning properly. Can either hold it or suddenly release it for action. This holding or releasing power explaining much that is uncountable in suddenness of action, change your mind. That's why a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. Like much else is left in obscurity as unexplainable. I can one moment and I cannot the, the next. And either you can do all things in Christ or because of your unbelief and doubt, you can't. That's demons operating within us, generally being put down to an erratic temperament or other causes. The believer, however, may be able to act because of the interruption or interference of this enemy. But we really, but he, the enemy, really has the ability for action if the faculties are free. In other words, you're not using your brains. Others whose lives are spent in the bondage of a spirit of infirmity. Now, it's pretty important. Okay, let me start that again. It's another paragraph. Others who lives are in the bondage of the spirit of infirmity, that's sickness and disease, are always conscious of the sense of inability. They are always too tired have no spirit, no energy for the ordinary demands of life, yet with no disease. In other words, you got a problem, brothers and sisters, because let me read this again. For the ordinary 
your everyday living with no disease or reasonably physical ground for the chronic insertion and feebleness, a sudden inability to listen, described as absent-mindedness or preoccupation with your thoughts. Oh, let me share something. You know, I, I always tell people to pray for me because after being in combat, Vietnam, years down the road, bombs and all that stuff, I, I have an impaired here hearing and people didn't understand that I didn't either until I went to doctors and they ran all the audible tests and everything else and I had I at my age have severe hearing loss so I pray every day for a miracle I pray every day that God gives me a, another miracle in my already uh, uh, disease laden but I, I can't say that anymore because God's done some wonderful things and cleaned my body and threw the enemy out from some of the bondage I was in some of the sickness I was in but absent-mindedness preoccupation when the person is compelled and compelled is written in all capital letters in war on the saints here on page uh, 157 that means you're being driven uh, and you follow some thoughts, some subjection, the thoughts that are subjected, and picture presented in the mind or to follow the words of another, so that you're trusting in man instead of the word of God, are all indications of the interference of evil spirits. That's why I always tell people when you go to a, a doctor, make sure if you're a believer, you go to a believing doctor, otherwise you're having open fellowship with darkness. Very important. The compulsions, especially being a mark of the demon's workings, of their workings, when the person is in a normal condition of health and your brain, your brain is not deceived. Now I'm turning the page now to uh, page 158 and it says here, beginning on the top, for instance, in spiritual meanings, when people seem hardly able to listen to a vital truth, how many recognize the work of the prince of the power of the air taking away the word? And that's in Matthew 13, 19. And, and let me read that to you, Matthew 13, 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, that's all of us, and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catch it away that which was sown in his heart. This is which is received. This is which received seed by the wayside. Now let me share that with you. That's why good preaching expounds on what the word is teaching. You have to, there's not everybody is at the same level of receiving. And, and you know, as a preacher, I've, I've learned that to expound when I'm reading verses in God's word so that the listening audience would get an idea, just like I'm reading Warn the Saints and studying and also adding my heart in this to give all my listeners an understanding that this is live. This stuff happens all the time in fellowship. But this by the suggestions of other things not appropriate to the moment and by the mind being unable to follow the speaker's words and to group and apprehend. And these are the streams of text and also pouring through the mind apart from concentration. And the volitional action of the mind may overpower all that the speaker is saying and carrying away. The hearer into faraway thoughts. And I always say that to people when you're sitting in church. Do you allow the enemy to take your thoughts away from the speaker and the words of God? And when you start thinking about other things than God's word being presented, those are evil spirits operating on you while you're sitting in church. 
Another word for it is daydreaming. You're thinking about something else. You don't hear what the speaker is saying, which appear as to be beautiful and divine, yet after the meeting is over, have no solid result in a person's practical life. Any admittance of these sudden suggestions or passing thoughts means you giving ground to the enemy. So here we go. This is going to be the last subtitle and the last part of our teaching on War in the Saints, Chapter 7, uh, beginning in page 154. We're going to end at uh, 159. We're going to end, so you know, causes of depression apart from the physical condition. Because right now we're, we're talking about the mind and the thoughts. So that's where I'm going to split it today. The two ways that are, the enemy puts thoughts into the mind. Very important, brothers and sisters. Listen to what I'm going to bring forth now. The deceiver, that's the devil, has two ways. Or his evil spirits has two ways of putting thoughts into the mind. By direct communication to the mind or indirect by attacks on the spirit causing undesirable feelings there, such as an impatient through the attacks, being impatient, which produce impatient thoughts in the mind, followed by impatient words. You know, every one of us has been there. The believer has a sense of being hindered persistently by some unseen obstacle for the evil spirit being Belongs, uh, there's a suggestion involved, a certain action that would take us to the evil. And then when he attempts it, he's hindered, causing in him to a sense of irritation for which he cannot account for. Nothing he does seems to go right. Boy, have I been there many times, brothers and sisters. And his life seems made up of pinprick troubles. Too much for him to bear. It's like you're, you're reading about yourself when you read this today or hear it. Causing a sense of uh, moronis, a moronisance and discontent which grows upon him in spite of himself. I'm going to come back to that word at the end. Feverish activities, which accomplishes nothing. We're in a rush to get things done. And what are we in a rush for if there isn't a spiritual accomplishment? Is manifested occasionally or the perpetual occupation, which gives no moment of rest. You know, you're always worrying about something or someplace. Difficulty with work in the daytime, dreams at night. A lot of, lot of uh, stuff going on here in this little chapter with no sense of rest or leisure at any time. You never come into God's rest. That's why I always tell people, if you want rest, Jesus said, come unto me. That means come into the word of God. And you'll find out if you lay your eyes upon the word, ears to the hearing of the word, there's a peace that's going to come upon all of us. Because number one, the enemy, the enemy is depressed when it hears the word of God. You know, we over, overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. Suffering, confusion, difficulty, difficulty of action, embarrassment, perplexity, all emanating directly, maliciously, and deliberately. Where is it coming from? Evil spirits, unrecognized by the man, or should I say us? Believers, and I'm on 159, whose circumstances and environments should give every cause for them to be glad and quiet, but their mind are harassed with terrible anxiety. There's a lot of believers that call from all over the place 
trying to talk to me and they don't heed instruction, people. And they are rarely free from their troubled thoughts. Well, and I don't give this book to people that are new or just been born again because they could never handle it. They become everything they're reading if they don't have a sound mind. The mind overestimates everything because the imagination and mental faculties are in bondage. You hear that? So don't try to wear your sleeves to people that are coming to you giving glory to the devil. All the glory goes to God, you know. We, you always got to teach people, give God the preeminence, read the Bible, especially the New Testament. Get to know Christ. Become a follower of Christ. And that, that's when you're going to put the, the word of God into action and see the victories. Because the imagination mental faculties are in bondage and the anthills appear as mountains to them. Everything is exaggerated. Hear that word? More than what it is. My demons, they're tormenting me. No, no, no. Greater is he that's in you, but you got to be born again. When you're born again, you ask Christ to save you, and he seals your spirit. The Holy Spirit seals you. You come out of darkness. Now you're going to begin to walk in the light and to climb the holy mountain. And when you're climbing the holy mountain in the book of Abadiah, there's deliverance for you and I. So they shrink from seeing others. In other words, they become a recluse. They stay in their houses. These are people, and I meet a lot of them, that are, really, they're demonized. And they don't want to heed instruction. They're, they're one way and one way only. As conversation begins to be difficult, they imagine others, it says here, and that's why they can't get their brain going in the right direction. They're only thinking as in an ordinary sense, but it is not thinking when a thing grips the mind. But when the mind grips the thing, their thinking goes beyond the line of pure mental action and let me let me take a moment here my back is hurt now i just want to take a moment i want to go back to the word moronius that i said i would talk about at the end and moronius is an objective word if you say that a person or their behavior is moronic you're thinking that they're very dumb or offensive and when when you use these words in in many different ways you know as an example i was not laughing at what he said but at his moronic method of delivery and and i could understand why a person demonized you would say is moronic and uh, it's a it, in the reading today, discontent which grows upon him in spite of his self. And, and she attributes this to being demonized. There's no, it gives no moment of rest, difficulty with work, even during the daytime, insomnia, or dreams at night, confusion, suffering, difficulty of action. Sometimes people are embarrassed, all enaminating directly, maliciously, and deliberately. And she gives us what the cause is. So we need to have compassion for people that act that way. And, and start praying for them, that they would recognize that God loves them, we love them, and expound on the word of God and tell them they don't have to be the way they were or are, that God can clean them up and change them, brothers and sisters. And with that said, 
I hope you enjoyed this teaching. Once again, chapter seven in War on the Saints, the title was Ground and Symptoms of Possession. We've learned throughout these, uh, I want to say five pages, because we started the fifth page, and next week, we're going to start on causes of depression apart from the physical condition. So I, I pray the message blesses everybody here and that you pass the ammunition and tell others about the book study on War on the Saints.